Next, in Perpetual Guardian Money Matters, we are talking about mortgages. It is a hot topic. National house prices hit a record high last month, so you need to know that you're getting the best deal for your money. Consumer advocate Charlotte Lockhart is in the studio today, and you brought someone along to help with this topic. Good morning. Good morning, Mel. Nice to see you again. So I've brought along Bruce Patton. He's a mortgage advisor with uh, Loan Market, and he's been in the industry for some 15, 20 years, so he knows a lot about this subject. Oh, excellent. Good morning, Bruce. Good morning. You must have started as a baby. <laughs> Glad you noticed. <laughs> <laughs> now, you, how do you choose a good mortgage broker? How do you go about it? Well, I think there's a couple of ways, but most importantly, having a look and seeing how long somebody's been in the industry. Um, it's a bit like looking for a trusted advisor in real estate or financial planning. Um, you know, you want to go out and have a look and see how long they've been in the industry. And particularly um, referrals from friends, social mm -hmm. networks are good because generally they'll be operating in the same social network, so you'll probably like their person as much as they do. Right, because you need to have that personal connection, don't you? You need to have that yeah. rapport. Yep, yep. It's got to be a trusted relationship because they're handling a big lot of, you know, big mm -hmm. asset on your behalf and you want to be able to trust them. It's a bit like w with a real estate agent, isn't it? Absolutely. You need to have that relationship. Yep. So how do you put yourself then in the best place to get a mortgage? Um, I mean, obviously, money's reasonably easy to come by nowadays. Um, the deposit's probably the hardest thing. I like the way you uh, say that. Money's reasonably easy to come by these days. Well, you know, the banks certainly have got plenty of it to give out. They do, um, yeah. So, uh, look, the, the main things you have to do are you've got to show a genuine ability to save. Um, not too much short-term debt, especially if you've got a low deposit. So get rid of all the credit cards and the higher purchases. Um, and most importantly, display to the lender that, with your rent and your savings, that's equivalent to what you're going to be paying in a mortgage because that's what they'll look at. If you've got a combined outgoing that's equivalent to $600 a week and that's what your mortgage payment's going to be, they're much more likely to give you a loan. OK. Why is the short-term debt a problem? Short-term debt's a problem because exactly that. It's paid off over a short period, so three to five years. So the payments, if you've got a $20,000 car loan, the payments are going to be quite high oh. and that'll affect how much you can borrow. Can I take a deposit from my KiwiSaver if I want to get a mortgage? Absolutely. Um, it's obviously available. There's a number of criteria. You've got to have been in it for at least three years. It's got to be your first home. You have to live in it. Um, so you have to have to look at the criteria to get it. Only for my first time, or could it be for a second home? There is a, what they call second time round. So if you haven't withdrawn from KiwiSaver before, there is the possibility of getting money, but there are some further restrictions about how much you earn and how many mm -hmm. assets you have. So, what about the bank of mum and dad, or can your parents help you out with a mortgage? Yeah, so there's probably three main ways that parents can help. The the easiest and most favourable would be a gift. Okay, so they give you the money. Are there any tax ramifications? No, there's no gifting duty anymore, so they can basically give it to you as much as they, they like, as much as they like. Okay. So, so that's obviously the most favourable for the kids. Well, um, yes. Not, not, not so favourable <laughs> for the parents. No. Um, they could be a co-borrower with you, so they can actually be either a co-owner or just a co-borrower on the property. Um, so that can help get get you in. That would that be if you didn't have enough deposit, perhaps yourself? Correct. Yep. Um, or if they don't want to be involved at all but have some involvement at a more of a standoff position, they can be a guarantor. So they can link their property to your property um, and uh, in that way you know, make it possible because you don't have enough deposit. The guarantor thing, then if it falls over, if you get into financial dire straits, your parents are then responsible for what That's you're right. going to go through. Yeah, so limiting the guarantee is always something that occurs and the parents need to be quite aware of uh, what their obligations are should you fail to, to pay back the money. Okay, so they really need to make sure that they can cover it off if you can't do it. Absolutely. Is there anything else that you think we really need to think about before we get a mortgage? Um, oh look, I suppose the main thing is can you afford it? There's so many people nowadays looking at interest rates at 4%, 4.5%. Because it looks going, so appealing. That's right. You know, A $500,000 mortgage is now going to cost you 20000 in interest payments. Um, it was only a few years ago that figure would have been 40000 So um, you do have to be very mindful of where the interest rates are and that you're not overextending yourself. And you've also got to think maybe in 10 years or so they are going to go up and you're going to be paying off a mortgage over a quite long length of time, most that's likely. That's right, yeah. OK, well, that's been quite enlightening and very interesting. Thank you so much for coming in, Bruce. Charlotte, a pleasure as always. And if you want more information on that, we've put a whole lot up on the Money Matters page on the CAFE website, thecafe.co.nz.